Welcome to this video, The First Steps in the Divine Will. And the title of this video is Holy is the Day of the Lord. And what I'll do today is share with the viewers uh, what I found when vetting myself against how well that I upheld commandments. And I found that that was a big impediment for my spiritual growth. And what I found in my own experience, I believe, will help many viewers. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today we're going to look at the third commandment. Keeping holy the day of the Lord, the Sabbath, and what I found in my own experience is that is often something that is severely neglected. We look at our duties regarding Sunday, the Sabbath, as merely attending Mass. But that's not all there is. And when I addressed this myself, and I really looked hard at how well that I addressed how well that I upheld the third commandment. I found myself severely lacking. And in looking at many people today, even those who consider themselves to be good Catholics, I think there's a lot of room for improvement. And I noticed when I made this improvement myself that it was a big boost for my spiritual life. But first, let us talk about how important keeping holy the Lord's Day is. I'm going to go to this Marian apparition, La Salette. If you're not familiar with La Salette, it was a Marian apparition in La Salette, France in 1846 to two children, Melanie and Maximin. And the reason why it's pertinent to this discussion is it's regarding keeping the commandments. You may recollect or have seen some statues of Our Lady of La Salette. And the statue shows Our Lady sitting on a rock with her face clasped in her hands crying. From that perspective, it's a very unusual Marian apparition. It's not the same that we're accustomed to. It's very striking. So what actually caused her to cry? What was the reason? And it was us not living God's commandments. So did she go to 1846 France to complain about the French being thieves, the French being murderers, the French being adulterers? No. She complained about the third commandment, not keeping the Sabbath, and also taking the Lord's name in vain. And Our Lady of La Salette's message to the two children at La Salette reads like this. Six days I have given you to labor, and the seventh I had kept for myself, and they will not give it to me. It is this which makes the arm of my son so heavy. Those who drive the carts cannot swear without introducing the name of my son. These are the two things which makes the arm of my son so heavy. And a reference to the arm of her son, Jesus, is that she, in her intercession for us as our mother, is attempting to hold back the justice of Jesus and she's using the analogy of holding back the arm of Jesus from dispensing that justice. It's important to note the nature of both of these commandments that Our Lady of La Salette is speaking about. The commonality between them is that both have to do with the relationship that we have with our Lord in this one, in keeping the Lord's day holy, yes, commandment three, and the second commandment, 
taking the Lord's name in vain. And that's another commandment that is frequently broken. A day doesn't go by, hardly at all, when I don't say, sorry, Lord, for someone taking the Lord's name in vain and saying a short prayer for them. Now that we demonstrated the importance of the third commandment and adhering to the third commandment faithfully in the sight of heaven via this apparition from La Salette, let me turn back to what I did wrong when I vetted myself against this third commandment. In other words, what did I find where I was deficient in adhering to the third commandment? And if you see something that relates to your own life, don't feel bad. When I did this, I was already a contemplative for years. And I had the advantage of a formation in the secular order of Carmel and I nevertheless was found lacking, and I should have known better. And the whole object of this is to relate what I found in my own experience that helped me quite a bit, and I hope that I can share it with you, and that you can also take advantage of the errors that I made in the past. So what did I do that was so egregious? Did I work on Sunday? No. Did I not go to Mass? No, I went to Mass. But what I found that I did is I did not keep holy the day of the Lord. I only kept holy one hour, and that hour is when I attended Mass. And the rest of the day was just like any other day. I would shop, I would go to restaurants, I would watch TV, sports, just like it was Saturday, which is also a day I didn't work. So let's look at each one of these and we need to look at it in light of practical guidance that we have for the times we live in. Now the church offers us excellent guidance in the catechism where it states that we should refrain from activities that hinder worship to God. It's easy to say this, but I think it's more helpful if we take a closer look at it. And let's start off with restaurants and food. It's a basic necessity. And of course, there's no restriction in obtaining necessary food. Now, does this mean that you should go to the supermarket on Sunday? Only if you really, really needed to. Obviously, there's six other days when you can perform that activity. The church's guidance has provided for universal needs and different circumstances what may be licit or valid isn't the same as being good and proper. So in a situation where most of us live in a developed nation, where we have access to supermarkets, in some cases 24-7, there's really no need to shop on Sunday. Regarding restaurants, we have to consider a couple of things. A good example where this is more complicated in today's society is we, we live in a mobile nation, a mobile society. People frequently travel, very often they'll be on vacation, and they re are required to eat at a restaurant. They have no other recourse. Now, the thing about eating at a restaurant it definitely does not promote our worship of God or our relationship with Him. It would be better to be recollected in the Lord while you're at rest. The other aspect of it 
is you have to consider other members of society. When you go to a restaurant, there's people that are required to serve you there. And they will be required to work on Sunday. Now you may say that I go to a restaurant where they're not Christian. Maybe I go to an Indian restaurant. Maybe I go to a restaurant where they're from China and they're not Christian. You have to also consider that you're providing an example in society. The example is you're supposed to be respecting the day of the Lord and honoring our Lord's day. And that actually may lead to people's conversion if you set a good example. Also for restaurants where they are Christian, someone may say, well, they, they're, they're Christian, but they really don't practice and they would be working there anyway if I didn't go. That's not a good reason either to go to a restaurant on Sunday because again, it's a matter of example. And also you're setting a demand that regardless requires them to work. It doesn't even give them the chance to decide whether they should worship on Sunday or not. Another situation that is prevalent in our days is the hospitality industry. Again, it's a, we have a mobile society. And people travel. People are required to stay at hotels. There has to be people there at those hotels to serve these people. And one thing that I'd like to point out also is that is Jesus was often castigated by the Pharisees regarding him not adhering to the Sabbath as they seen it. And this occurred due to him performing works of mercy, healing. They were always saying, you cannot heal, it's a Sabbath. An activity like that is really an activity that's serving the Lord, as honoring the Lord. So you can also relate that to those that work in a medical profession. People don't stop getting sick on Sunday. People have to work in emergency wards, they have to work in the hospitals and provide services there. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's something that is needed. If you need to work on Sunday in a situation like that, there's not a problem with that. That's the necessity that the church recognizes. It's a social necessity. I'm saying this also, speaking about these exceptions, because I don't want to make people feel as scrupulous about their own spirituality to the point where it hinders them. What I recommend is if you're someone who is doing what I did, in other words, you're going to restaurants and you're shopping, that's another big one, especially these days, then do those on other days. You don't need to do those on Sunday. You have to consider also that shopping is not a um, single party event. There's someone on the other side of the transaction, either in the store or online, that may be required to address your demand that you're creating by shopping online or in the store. There used to be laws where stores would be closed on Sunday. And unfortunately, there was a demand and due to the greed of companies, and I say that because companies also need to give people time to worship. Employers are not exempt from this requirement to themselves and also to those whom they employ. Let us look at the other side of keeping the Sabbath holy. And what it does for the soul, I mentioned that after doing this, after this vetting against the third commandment, that it gave me a big boost in my spiritual life. And I definitely was not 
honoring the Lord. And I definitely was not helping myself either. And the reason being is, and I, I probably can go back to the Bible, to the quote from Jesus where he says, the Sabbath is meant for man and not man for the Sabbath. And the reason being is that day of rest and recollection that allows us to open ourselves up for Jesus to work within us, to work within our soul, where he's actually helping us that day. And we can substitute some of the activities that I mentioned that we should refrain from with good activities, such as reading, reading the Bible, reading the Book of Heaven, some religious book that will help you grow, looking at maybe instead of a movie or sports, you could look at something like a Catholic movie. Everyone here is watching this video is by default familiar with how to use YouTube. And YouTube has free Catholic movies. You just need to search for them. And of course you can pray more. Say an extra rosary, the rounds, Chapel of Divine Mercy, Chapel of St. Michael, or just be recollected in the Lord. Now, I'd like to relate how important the third commandment and living it properly is to living in the divine will. And I want to make sure that there's no misunderstanding regarding people living in the divine will and thinking that because they do so, that anything that they do on Sunday is Jesus doing it and that it's holy. It's important to understand the perspective that it is us living in God's divine will. And it is not God who's living our human will. In other words, we should be living his will and not do our own will and say that God is doing it. Also, going back to the idea that the Sabbath is for man and not man for the Sabbath, and the good that living the third commandment properly provides is that it's an excellent training ground for living in the third and fourth degree when everything in those degrees or about God. I'd like to thank you for watching. And as always, please like and subscribe. God bless.